for designers, the, the proof of their design is the operation, the successful operation of a facility. But once you've got to that point, it's really too late if there's something that is not quite right about the design. So it is important that designers have the opportunity to take much greater account of operational requirements and also to have the confidence that their design will be truly fit for purpose. So no longer would they run the risk, let's say, of a facility which, which might fall short in certain areas. They would have the confidence of knowing that they had considered actively the many factors that need to be taken account of to run a facility over many, many years. And when we talk about facilities, we're talking about all manner of different structures. So it's not simply buildings, it's other structures too. The standard provides designers of all disciplines with the opportunity to have a more consistent process for considering the requirements of the owner and end users of whatever facility is envisaged. The standard provides a roadmap, if you like, to enable detailed consideration of all the activities that must be taken into account. Who needs to be involved? Which stakeholders are important? the risks at each point and the resources required. So here we're actually exposing a process to closer scrutiny. We're allowing designers and owners who will obviously take an interest in the standard too to ensure that what they're actually going to get at the end of the day has actually been taken through a very detailed process in which the needs of the operational phase have been taken very much into account. Now, I think it's important not to overdo it in terms of the needs of the operational phase, but the sad reality is that we have buildings all around us, for instance, that fail to deliver the promise that was expected. Well, my involvement in the new standard began some years ago in some work that I was doing with uh, people in industry about how we could improve the quality of design briefing. And so when in the last two years we started to look particularly at areas in need in facility management, then I was able to uh, offer some insights into how we might improve design briefing. The main benefit of the standard is probably in its ability to ensure that there is a structured approach to the design process to take account of the particular requirements of the operational phase. Direct benefits to the owner and the operator would be in greater efficiency in the design and that in particular manifests in greater energy efficiency, less wastage and so there's a win-win situation all round. One of the historical weaknesses in the design of facilities has been the lack of attention to the operational requirements. Because of the split responsibility between designers, constructors and operators, it's not always been possible to think through the requirements. And so a facility is delivered and then an operator comes along and finds that it doesn't deliver against expectations. Now, in the normal course of events, for a lot of buildings, it's possible for the designer to produce a brief which really does reflect the requirements of the operational phase. But with the increasing demand for energy efficiency and pointing towards low carbon, then it's important that we do have a much more rigorous approach to design and that through construction this is translated into a facility which can be operated in an efficient, low carbon manner. Well, the primary users of the standard would be designers. This is the whole design community, in fact. Architects, building services engineers, structural engineers. Collectively, they need to use the standard to ensure that as they produce their design, that it's able to be translated, not just into something that can be constructed, that's the principle of buildability or constructability, but that operability is also ensured. So the standard makes clear how they can be actively thinking about operational needs whilst they are working through the design. There are many things that designers have to take account of 
the needs of the client first and fundamentally. But they've got to deal with a whole raft of issues, including changing legislation, tighter controls, not least of all in the area of energy. The standard provides clarity where previously there's been a lack of it. In fact, there's been a paucity of information in areas touching on the operational phase. The standard helps designers to take account of operational requirements in a much more structured and rigorous manner than has previously been the case. But in doing so, the standard does acknowledge and builds on existing design briefing guidance. One of the other benefits of the standard is that it closes the loop. And by that I mean that whilst design feeds forward into construction and construction feeds forward into operations, operations doesn't always feed back into design. The standard provides a very clear mechanism by which experience of the operation of facilities can find its way into the early stages of design. In that way, designers will be more aware of the requirements that they need to be conscious of when producing their working design. Mm -hmm.